Si ya betuwa ba, nene kwa fwa stati. Ana, we ni bewi ni. Mahama ni eba. Anadu ni eba. Ba umia ni eba. Na mafu biyade ni mkomse eba. Dr. Demina, sasa ha predictions we ni nina ano. Eye mugu, e muye lutu forecaster. E lutu enu mucha. E si ya, ye betuwa be, dizembe. E mkomse di, mini mse mwa muti, mi mwa tibi mwona. Dr. Demina, asa ha kwa tina, e ye abranti e fenu, po adu mwa chile e fidi yeso. Na this time around the day, one fans pay as of one almost for me a deep for almost see a bee woman or more young common. One fans pay more crowd was in young coupon or interfere in the affairs of men be moo and yet tenno. They say, Yeah, yeah, cause any pun at Waba. It is one more question common as one quiet prediction, a bemo, a prediction, and in a media, a year to be a. In some more debut today, who is saying a young throw, and I say no correct. Massima will be sad for a comment. Okay, welcome back to the show, uh, Dr. Damina. Yes. Ghana is in an election year. Last year, Nigeria was in an election year. If there is a pastor, and there are quite a few of them, who says that, by the grace of God, I have predicted every election in Nigeria correctly. I predicted that um, Shagari was going to win. He won. I predicted that Obasanjo was going to win. He won. I predicted that there would be a coup d'etat in Nigeria to be led by a guy called Mohamed Sani Abacha. It happened. I predicted good luck Jonathan, he won. I predicted Muhammad Buhari, he won. Even in Ghana, I predicted John Kufo, and he won, by the grace of God. Should we ignore that? Well, you know, uh, Mr. Paul, Christianity is apostolic and historic. Mm -hmm. So we want, to, we want to understand that Christian practice is based on what was handed down to us by Jesus, the head of the church, and the apostles of the Lamb. What they never did, we are not supposed to do what they did was supposed to do. Jesus lived under a government in his time, but he never got involved with any form of predictions. And that's our master. He never spoke about anything politics. He was not even involved. He was never found at the corridors of power. But he was in that society. Doesn't he care about politics? Doesn't he care about government? Well, that's instructive. Apostle Paul, Peter, James, John, the foundational apostles lived in a time when they were under governments that were not even doing well. And they never said anything about it. The only time Paul had an opportunity to come to the corridors of power, he preached. And the, the king said, too much learning makes thou mad. You are beside yourself. You almost persuaded me to be a Christian. That's the much you will find. A Christian, a man of God that is truly a preacher of Christ, will follow the examples of those who have laid the foundation of the church. And not double into all of that. I have no problem with somebody predicting, just like a soothsayer can pre predict a divine. Can God tell me? The, the Bible says God knows the beginning from the end, Alpha and Omega. Can He tell me who would win the elections in Nigeria next time if I pray to God that eternal God, please show me the way, show me the future? You said that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You said that the Holy Spirit has come to reveal all truths. Show me who is going to win this election. Is that a, a wrong prayer? No, it's, it, he could show you. I mean, he could show you. Does he again. know? Oh, he does. He knows the end from the beginning, beginning from the end. So he knows? He does. So he can tell you? He does. He can tell you. But like I've said, you must also realize that there's an apostolic foundation on which the church of Jesus operates, on which the church of Jesus functions. And we must not improve and innovate on that foundation. The Bible tells us in Corinthians, no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Paul will say the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets of the Lamb, Jesus himself being the cornerstone, which means Christianity is apostolic and historic. We stay within the confines of the traditions. And what I mean by traditions is the beliefs of scripture that we see practiced. So are you committing sin as a pastor? Are you out of line if you set out to conduct a two weeks fasting for God to tell you who is going to win Ghana's election? And that is why a lot of Nigerian prophets were messed up. By what? Predicting all kinds of stuff during the election. That didn't happen. A lot of them. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Didn't even For, do, for those that it happened. For those who predicted the Nigerian election. So now that becomes, Bola was going to win. It and he won. So now it becomes a gamble. How is it a gamble? Somebody because says, I pray to God. Both of them prayed and fasted. This one comes to say, this this one. This one comes to say, is that one. Well, is one of them false prophet? Well, the for, one whose prediction didn't happen. The fact, well, the fact that somebody predicted... The Bible says, if somebody says, thus says the Lord, and it doesn't come to pass, don't believe him. Don't take him serious. Forever. Don't fear him. 
Because he's a false prophet. No, he didn't say because he's a false prophet. What did he say? <laughs> he just left it like that. <laughs> so if you predict that... Um, I will not. That uh, if, if, if a pastor predicts okay. that uh, Peter Obi was going to win the election... Many of them did. They did. I, I heard it. I've seen videos. That Peter Obi was going to win the election. That God is bringing salvation to Nigeria. Uh, Peter Obi is going to win the election. But remember Jesus said, my government is not of this world. If my government were be of, to be of this world, I would bring angels down. Would, his, he, g, g, politics but is, he said God is interested in the affairs of men. What does that mean? The affairs of men simply mean God has put a planet, put everything in the planet for men to operate the planet. But he says he's interested. His interest there is because he loves you. And because he loves you, he makes sure that everything in the planet works for you. Yes, he wants That's everything in the planet to work for me. He's interested in the affairs of men. Here is Nigeria's super eagles lined up against Ivory Coast elephants for the grand final of the African Cup of Nations. Yes. I'm Nigerian. Yes. I'm God person. Yes. God loves me. Yes. I go to the temple yes. and say, eternal father, yes. this one, don't let them laugh at me. Yes. Give Nigeria victory. Yes. And then I hear in my spirit, 2-1. Yes. Then I call the radio station Akwa Ibo. Yes. Listen, yes. the Lord has spoken to me. Yes. Nigeria will win by two goals to one. They say, who scored the goals? I don't know who scored the goals, yes. but we're winning two goals to yes. one. Two one comes, Nigeria has won. Yes. I'm a great prophet. Well, that's what you say, but it's not just one. To know a prophet in scripture doesn't come by predictions. Mm -mm. A prophet in the word of God is known by his ability to take the holy scriptures and bring Christ out. Prophet? Yes. I thought he's speaking the future. No. What do the prophets do? To prophesy. Old Testament prophets spoke into the future concerning Christ. His death, his burial, his resurrection. In the book of Joel chapter 2, Joel took all that from the prophets and made it the collective responsibility of believers. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh in the last days. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. It's no more the exclusive job of prophets to be seeing things. It now becomes our collective because the spirit of God now lives in the inside of so every the office of, of prophets has expired. So in the New Testament, the office of the prophet is different from the office of the prophet in the Old Testament. How do you know that? Oh, that's what the Bible teaches. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, it says, He that ascended, descended, he gave gifts unto men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastoring teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. Absolutely. To do the work of ministry so that the body of Christ can be edified. Not for the prediction of football games, not for the prediction of politics, but for the perfecting, equipping believers to do the work of ministry so that the body of Christ can be edified, so that we are no longer tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine. And this was upon his resurrection. He laid down the blueprint of how the office of ministry ought to function in the body of Christ. And what the objectives, what the targets, what the responsibilities of this office of ministry is supposed to achieve. To raise a people for God that will preach the gospel, demonstrate the power of God, and be a blessing to humanity. That is the greatest agenda in the heart of God. Demonstrate the power of God. Yes. Is to show that as man limited by mortality yes i can tell you what will happen in december i'm demonstrating the power of no, god the demonstration of the power of god in this context is the salvation of men i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ it is the power so the preaching of the gospel to save you is the power of god the gospel is that power and the mission of that power is salvation yes the, the salvation but i'm showing you that to save a man the god that i'm asking you to submit to his salvation it's a God who is all-encompassing. Yes. He can even tell you who can win a football match. But, but in the scriptures, you won't see that. I That's what it. I'm saying. But why is that prophet you see not the, on the line of a New Testament prophet? Because, you see, if, the, if it was open-ended... Because they don't do that every day. Yes. If they do was, that when an event comes. If it was open-ended, then there would be a lot of malpractices. The word of God is the check and balance for the operation of gifts... The operation of the spirit. If the spirit is leading you to do something that contradicts the word of God, it cannot be the spirit of God. If the prophet says, uh, I'll come to negative prophecy, but positive prophecy, he says that Nigerian Afrobeats musician Berna Boy, 2027, is going to perform at Wembley Stadium. There will be some casualties, but that performance will make Berna Boy the greatest Afrobeats of all time. At this time, Berna Boy tells his friends that I will never perform at Wembley. And then they tell the pastor that you are crazy. You are totally crazy. 
Bernard Boy said he would never perform at Wembley. 2027, Bernard Boy performs at Wembley. There are casualties. He walks out with a big paycheck. He's being compared to Jay-Z. That's the prophet. How does that advance God's purpose on the earth? It grows the faith of the believers. Whose believers? The believers. Remember. Who, who heard it? Who heard the prophet of Jesus say something in the future? It looked like it's unlikely, but it happened. Remember, 40 years of miracles, Israel did not believe God. 40 years of miracles. Does it mean, therefore, that if miracles happen today, it doesn't build up the faith of the believers? Miracles alone are not enough. No, not, a, not only that, but it is that particular miracle will add to the faith of believers. That particular miracle will add to the faith of believers if it was within the confine of evangelism. Well, he said it's in church. So, Well said it in church how does it benefit the church born a boy is not part of that church yes but he's telling you that the lord that you are serving and that event the lord that you are serving and that event he knows today from that tomorrow. event is not to the glory of god which one that event that performance that concert is not to the glory of god because the lyrics of the songs in that con concert are not of glory to god i come to the song but the prophet who told the guy uh, with the food in israel that tomorrow by this time Again, remember Old Testament. And that you will die. Remember the Old Testament prophets are different from the New Testament prophets. The New Testament prophets are said by God in the church. Give me an example of a New Testament prophet. Agabus. Yes. The one who predicted that Paul was going to be killed. Yes, Agabus. That's negative prophecy. Well, but Paul, Paul said, I am ready to die. And I am ready to, you know, I'm ready to go to those people and die. And but so Agabus Paul is a knew. prophecy yes. of Paul, the death of but Paul. Remember Paul again. It is as it relates to the mission of evangelism. That's why I'm telling you that even the operation of the gifts of prophecy, which is from God, has to be with the, within the confines of the mission of God to save man from sin. But let's keep on Agabus. Agabus said, and I was going to go to pastors who predict somebody is going to die. This is now, going to happen. No, Agabus the said, point I'm making Paul is, it's not going like to die. Believers cannot prophesy. Negative and um, um, prophesy death. Predict things. Mm -hmm. Even in the negative, even in the negative prophecy, it is so that caution can be taken, correction can be made, and salvation can occur. So negative prophecy is not in itself bad. No, because the essence is to re reveal so there can be redemption. Okay. In Ghana, every year 31st December, since the last five to four years. Pastors turn up, and particular pastors are known for that, who give a prediction of the coming year. And they sometimes say that somebody's going to die. There's a law in Ghana in the books that says that a Ghanaian who is publish, publishing a document, like speech, should not publish something to occasion fear and panic. If you do that, you can be arrested by the police. The Inspector General of Police, over the last two years, will issue a statement on 31st December that any pastor who doesn't know and say somebody's going to die, we will catch him. Christians have been revolting against that command and authority from the police. That it is part of God's work. As you are saying, predicting somebody is going to die, it's not in itself bad. It is intended for caution, for prayer to come. And these pastors will usually say that if we don't pray, this guy will die. Is that a correct prophecy? Well, again, remember the Spirit of God does not peddle fear. Correct. Because God has not but given why, us a spirit yeah, of Why fear. are we to be afraid of it? He says, if we, if we don't pray, this person will die. Well, again, you know, even in the oppression of the gifts of the Spirit in the Bible, there is wisdom. There is wisdom in that oppression. Mm -hmm. You don't just speak things. There's wisdom. When God gives you a prophecy, he gives you the wisdom of communicating it. So God can give you a prophecy of somebody who's going to die. And he will give you the wisdom on how to communicate it so it doesn't come with fear. The man that God sent the uh, angel to tell him that he was going to die so she put his house in order. Well, again, remember, it, it, it was Eli Isaiah who told Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. And Hezekiah said to God, God... But that's a, that's a prediction of death. Now, hold on. But Hezekiah said, God, you can't be in that prophecy. You can't be for my death. And God said, Isaiah, go back. I don't know what you did. Go no, back. Hezekiah went to plead. He didn't tell God that's, that. That's, he pleaded to God that please give me more time. No, that's that's in your own understanding. But in what Bible, does the scripture say? In Bible understanding, uh -huh. Isaiah said, uh, Ezekiel said, I'm going to I'm going to appeal to God. I'm going to remind God that the grave cannot praise Him, the dead cannot praise Him. So in my death He has no praise, but in my life He has praise. 
And God says, since it's to praise, 15 more years is added to you. Yes, yeah, so God added but 15 again, more remember, years. Remember, because God had told Isaiah to tell Hezekiah to die. But remember, that was with the Old Testament lenses. God does not kill. He couldn't have sent Isaiah to tell Hezekiah to die and change his mind. God does not repent. God is not. So Isaiah man. was not speaking. Isaiah like just prophesied, as a prophet would just prophesy. But and God Ezekiah, could have told Hezekiah that I don't know anything it's about not it. Terribly, you know Isaiah. It's I don't not, know anything about it. But God said yes. I know about no, God it. God didn't say but yes. But I've added 50, the, the no. communication of adding 15 years. No, God didn't say yes. He's adding 15 years to what? No, God didn't say yes. What was he adding 15 well, years Well, again, to? like I said, if you understand the character of God all through holistically, you know that God does not function like that. He doesn't kill? God doesn't kill. There's a scripture that says, I, the Lord, I do all things. I create that. No, there's, I create that. No, there's no scripture like that. Oh, it's, we, we, it's here. There is. Okay. Yeah, but, we'll find it for you. It says, yes. I, the Lord, I do all things. I yes. create darkness. I create light. Yes, that's Isaiah. That's in Isaiah. That's Isaiah. That's Isaiah speaking. That's Isaiah about speaking God. about God. It's not God himself talking. Not God himself. So Isaiah was not telling us the truth. No, he wasn't. So we should ignore it. Yes. It's part of scripture. Well, it's not everything that is part of scripture that we take. It has to be interpreted in the light of but Isaiah is a great prophet. He's a great prophet. Why do you say he wasn't okay, speaking? Let the me truth? show you something else. Isaiah said that Jesus did not did not did not subscribe to. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah chapter 61, he says, To proclaim the acceptable year of the, the Lord, Lord yeah. the day of vengeance of our God. Mm -hmm. When Jesus recited it, he omitted vengeance. And he closed the book. But the Bible says vengeance is of the Lord. Well, the vengeance there in that Isaiah context is different from the one you're quoting right now. Well, but if you look because at Isaiah, in, in the Bible, if you cross over from Isaiah to Revelations 13, 14, yes. this vengeance appears to manifest in what the eternal God will come and do in Jerusalem. So that's what I'm saying. Vengeance in that context is different from vengeance in this other context. In the Bible, there's no omnibus application to any word. Each word is interpreted within its context. The word may sound alike. For example, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. For God so loved the world. Love, love. Love not, he loves. So that the word world is used in different contexts. Different contexts. Yeah. For God so loved the world. Yes. But he says not love, so not the world. So world is not world, mm -hmm. even though world is world. So vengeance is so different. So vengeance is not vengeance, even though vengeance is vengeance, depending on the context. So you have to look at the pretext. You process. make salvation look simple, takes you to heaven, cleanse. But the biblical interpretations that you provide, Dr. Damina, is very complicated. Which one? Like this. The, the uh, context. Isaiah was not telling the truth. Single mention is not doctrine. You, you make it difficult for Re us to Re believe that we can be normal Christians and, uh, and uh, live our lives. But you make us feel that to understand the Bible is, is a long, short away. Because but, now when I read the Bible, I have to call you. Yeah. Dr. Damien, I just read Isaiah. Is it true or not? Yeah, that's you say what, it's true. That's, then I where, move on that's where teaching comes. Remember, the Bible is an ancient world that was written in a culture with a different worldview, that was written in a different environment. So to interpret the Bible today, you must sit where they sat, Hear what they had. That's too long. Then travel to our but world to, today. But that's what the Holy Spirit has come. Well, the Holy Spirit has come yeah, through to bridge the gap. Through men. Yes. Through men. Through men. To, to bridge the gap. No, to interpret. But the Holy Spirit has come to all. No, it's it come to all men. That is what available to all men. It's available, but God gave you teachers. He appointed teachers to teach. He appointed pastors, evangelists. But you said the Spirit of the, the Lord has fallen on all flesh falling on all flesh where it comes to the operation of gifts of the spirit or the gifts the gifts including the, the teaching prophecy teaching no, is not one of it no listen uh, teaching is part of it but before you teach you have to be taught you grow you learn then you are able to teach others paul will say to timothy the things you have heard of me among many witnesses the same commit to others so we teach you learn how to interpret scriptures Jesus himself had to interpret scriptures and he taught the disciples for 40 days. After 40 days, they took Jesus' pattern of interpretation and began to interpret in the book of Acts into the epistles. That is how God designed for his word to be interpreted. Nobody just takes the Bible and interprets. He has to be taught. That's why the word he expounded, the word daimonua, which means he interpreted the scriptures. 
which means Moses did not speak in literal terms, which means the prophets did not speak in literal terms. So Jesus had to interpret them into the world in which he lives, the vocabulary that was in existence at, at the time he lived, so that what was said then can be of relevance to the understanding of the people of today. Because the Bible is an ancient book that requires interpretation. So that's why you don't pick words of scripture, hook, line, and sinker. You have to calm down and interpret. Look at the context. Look at the word in which that word was used. For example, I use this example all the time. If I said on my way to Accra, it rained cat and dogs, and I wrote in a book, 100 years from now, cat and dogs may not be in use as language of communication. Somebody picks the book to read. On my way to Accra, it rained cat and dogs. In his understanding then, cat and dogs were falling from the sky. It will take somebody who was in this world to tell him, no, it was a form of communication back then. Cat and dogs mean it rained heavily. That's what happens with the Bible. Because the Bible was written many, many years ago. The language of use, the worldview, the culture, the grammar, the vocabulary was of that time. Today, you have to take that worldview translate it into today's and apply what was communicated is that not understand. what what you are saying that we should be doing is that not what the committee did constantine's committee and it's in one of the notes that they gave me i'm going to find it um you said god doesn't kill but it's here in sodom and gomorrah he, he actually murdered everybody well again you know sodom and gomorrah was a type of the end of the world the day lot left it rained fire Jesus said, as so it was, is it a metaphor, Sodom and Gomorrah? Is it metaphorical or well, is it real? It, it, was, it, it was real. It was real. But, but why but do you say it's a type of end time? A type and shadow. You know, the Old Testament is types and shadows. Mm -hmm. Prophecies and promises. So it is indicating to us how it will be in the end time. Like it was socially. People are going to die in that manner. People are going to be. Yeah. If they Ananias reject, and Sapphira got the killed. Gospel. Ananias, well, Ananias and, Sapphira, and Peter. Sapphira, Peter killed them. Yes. Yeah. God didn't kill them. God didn't Peter. kill them. Peter did. That's why later on, when Peter had grown spiritually, mm -hmm. the Simon, Simon the sorcerer committed mm -hmm. a worse offense than Ananias and Sapphira. He mm -hmm. didn't kill them. He just told them to repent of this evil in his heart. The scriptural issue that you're raising, which I think is confusing for those of us who are not full-time pastors or Bible No, you don't have to be full-time pastors the, to understand. The Nicene Council, I don't know what I'm producing as well. Yes. They organize the books yes but they must have captured it in the language of today no they captured it in the language of that day that's where the original manuscript from where all translations come from mm -hmm. is the greek the yes Hebrew. but the king james people were did the work in 16 something yes the king james people yes. in the english of that time, yes they not in the, the english of today english has not changed significantly well but it's changing i mean you not don't significantly use, you don't use verily verily you don't use the very verily is understandable today okay so it's not it's not so it's not complicated there's a lot you don't use that in today's english it's allowed no but it's allowed but in today's it. english the understanding will will be will almost not be no very very simple very very means very but again remember the english of that day when the bible was translated from greek and the hebrew to the english of that day mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. the vocabulary the vocabulary available at that time was not as robust as it is right now. I agree. So that is why in today's English... But, when but the context in, won't change significantly. The context won't change. It will change very significantly. Mary was For expecting example, the let me, child. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Yes. Okay. I've that word it. study is not study. It's what? In the Greek is be diligent. Same. Well, diligent study. Be similar. Di it's similar. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that understanding... You but diligent means what? Diligent to show yourself approved unto God. Yeah, diligent that means what? Give yourself diligent, diligent in the context of that discourse. Mm. There's a discourse that was going on, and then he brought in diligence yeah. in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Paul was addressing a minister of the gospel by the name of Timothy, and he was telling him to be diligent in the pursuit of his assignment. And part of that diligence is in how he handles the scriptures. That the scriptures must be rightly divided. The word ototomio. Ototomio means when you take the scriptures, you cut through the scriptures to arrive at the truth. 
just like a medical doctor will carry out a caesarean section with expertise in making sure he does not cut the good parts and in making sure he does not leave part of the bad part. He must be skilled, just like the miners will go into the rocks and mine precious stones. They must be skilled so they don't wound the precious stone and reduce its value and so they don't leave part of the precious stone. There's skill required. So that kind of expertise that the doctor and the, law and the, and the, the miner will use is the kind of expertise a man of God must use in handling the, the Bible because you have to cut through to arrive at the truth. Should Christians be concerned about certain books in the Bible that have not been um, certain books in the Bible that have not been uh, mentioned or read? The 66 canonical books, uh, for instance, the book of um, Enoch, Jasher, etc. Sometimes when we're in school, they used to talk about the six and seven books of Moses. Should and we be concerned that our Bible is not complete, that no, it was the Roman Empire that decided that we should have this no, Bible? No, we, we shouldn't. The early founding fathers of the church came up with the canonization of scripture. And the reason was because there were many books written by the early fathers. The books were too many. You can't even count them. And so the early founding fathers decided, what, what should we have that is going to be our book or the book that reveals God to us? So they came up with, a, a, you know, um, it came up with requirements. Number one, it must have divine origin. Number two, it must have a consistent message. Number two, it must be tied together by one revelation. Mm -hmm. So they began to take the books through canonization. Did we leave some out? All the other ones that didn't pass that test were left out. So was that test a righteous test? It was a righteous test. Was it spiritual or was it was, administrative? It was both spiritual, administrative, intellectual. But, That's why but this is the Roman Empire doing it? Yes. What kind of spiritual... No, the founding fathers of the Christian of faith. The, the, yes. The apostolic fathers? Yes. They did it? Yes. Who were they? They put together the material that the Nicene Council looked into all of them and, and saw the apostolic books and other books that are consistent together that has one common message and they found it was only 66 out of all the thousands of books and they canonized it. And that's what we have as a Bible. And when you look at the Bible, it is tied together with one message, one character. Where is the six and seven books of Moses? Well, uh, I'm not bothered to look at it because I still have these 66 to to contend with and to understand. Could it be relevant to though? Well, or should we, should not, we where satisfy, not where salvation is should we, should we gratify ourselves in the fact that Jesus Christ said, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you. No, so we don't need to worry about whether there's a book or there's no book. The Holy Spirit will reveal to us no, there, all truths. No, there's a closure to the revelation. And that closure is what the apostles of the Lamb taught and where it ended. That's you said clear. salvation uh, works in eternity. Yes. If a pastor who's obviously been saved has led people to salvation, confesses that he's LGBT, would he go to hell? Again, like we said the last time we had an interview here, LGBT people are not bad people. They are just people suffering from identity crisis. Identity crisis. Identity crisis. They are not sure Man. of who they are. Ah, okay. So how do you come into uh, knowing Is it a who sin? You are? It's a sin. To suffer from identity crisis? It's a sin. Why? Sin against who? Well, it's a sin against yourself, and it will lead to sinning against God. Oh, understand. yes. The Bible but tells identity us, crisis the Bible can tells manifest us in, itself the Bible in different, us, different ways. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 1 mm -hmm. that men left the natural use of their bodies. Okay? That's a sin. Mm -hmm. And God gave them up to do things that are not convenient. That's yes, a sin. That is offending and the first, law of nature. And, and in First Timothy, mm -hmm. the Bible listed sins and homosexuality is part of it. But these sins are not, they are not sins that lead you to hell. Mm -hmm. What do they understand? lead you to? They are sins that, you know, keep you out of the will of God for your life. But that you can go to heaven. That open the door for Satan to deal with you. Okay, but you can go to if heaven. If you believe in Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection, you are in heaven. So you're a pastor, you believe in Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection. You turn LGBT, your uh, uh, gay partner is one of your pastors. Both of you will go to heaven. But remember, a man of God cannot be a novice. So a man in identity crisis is not fit to pastor a church. A man of God must be matured, must be given to the word of God, and the word of I God get must that. Renew So you can be mind. asked not to pastor the church. Will he go to heaven? Oh, yeah, if, he's, if he believes in Jesus and is gay, he will go to heaven. Gays will go to heaven? Oh, sure, why not? Gay? Yes. LGBT? Yes. Lesbians? If they transgender? Jesus, who did Jesus die for? Sinners. When did Jesus die? 
Two thousand we years yet, ago, while we were yet while we were yet sinners, so our in sins, that while we were yet sinners, so, Christ died. For so us. our sins did not stop his death. And the point you're making is that the LGBT sin is the same as me lying. Yes, exactly. The sin same as sin. where God is concerned. Yeah, sin is sin. So lie, if if stealing. my if if I lie, and I cheat as a politician. Yes. I occasion rigging elections. Right in the same I am the same category as the LGBT. LGBT. All of you are together. But we all make it to heaven. No, you make it to heaven only if you believe in Jesus. I mean that. We are, we are now, born again. Now, but when you believe in Jesus also, a transformation begins to happen. And I will probably stop the LGBT at it some will, point. Yes, you will. But I may not. You may and not. And die with it. You may not. You die with it. Cheated. You go to heaven. You're marginalized. Yes, you go to heaven, but marginalized. But the we, kind we, of victory we have been authority. we have been told so much about the disaster of hell that any part of heaven is good for anyone. <laughs> so if you say this, the boys at the back are going to say, "Hooray!" Pastor Damina says we are good to go. No, they are not going to say if they really have the spirit of God. You see, the, 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 the beauty of this thing is anyone that is truly born of God mm -hmm. and he hears a message like this, he doesn't see it as an opportunity to go and continue sinning. He sees it as God's love for me is too much. I cannot continue to make God unhappy. Bishop T.D. Jakes has denied allegations that he may be LGBT. But he says, even if it is true, he has sinned against only God. Everyone should shut up. Is he right? Well, you know, when it comes to that, because I don't have all the facts, it's very difficult for me to comment. But this statement of, and it was made in the Bible, I think it was David also, that if I've sinned, I've sinned against only God. Everyone clear off. Well, you know, you know um, David said that after he killed Uriah in the Old Testament, in Psalm 51, mm -hmm. against thee and thee only have I sinned. But that is the truth. Actually, man's sin is basically against God because it is only God that forgives sin. So David was right. David was right. T.D. Jakes is right. Well, he's right. Hmm. Only God. Talk of David, let me just digress a little bit and come, yes. to, come back to you with another uh, boyhood argument we used to have. David was told by God that he cannot build a temple because this is his blood on his hands. Okay. In the scripture union in those days, there was a big argument about why did God deny David the construction of the temple? Was it the immorality uh, of taking somebody's wife? Or was it the murder of Uriah? Or was it both? Well, again, you remember, the Bible clearly says it because there's blood in your hand. So it's the matter of Uriah. But that. It's not the sexual immorality. No, the blood. Hmm. Many people will not like to hear you say that. Well, that's anyway, what the Bible says. I'd like to go to the video where we'll show you some of the things that uh, you have said. Okay. And then uh, we will get some explanations from you. But let me ask you, many Nigerians are not happy with you, Dr. Damina, because the example I already mentioned... In that, uh, on that Sunday afternoon at the um, Alassani Watara Stadium, you refused to say a prayer for the Super Eagles. Even when they took the lead, you didn't say any prayer for them, and they lost the game. You are in Nigeria. Well, how did they know I didn't pray? That's what they are telling me, that if you are so powerful that if you had prayed after the first goal, Nigeria would have won. If the Super Eagles had done their homework well, they would have won. <laughs> really? Yes. They didn't do their homework well. Yes, they didn't do their homework well. Uh, because Philippe George will not like football, to hear that. He's a, football, he's a new coach of Nigeria. Politics is all competition amongst men. So give it your best shot. Do your training well. Do all you need to do well. Get in there and, and, and play your best. And if you win, good. If you don't win, yeah. is it a sin to steal elections? Well, again, it depends on what steal is. To, to change the figures and make somebody win. You know, I used to have somebody. Um, who was in um, the American government, a man of God. And he came to Nigeria and he said to me, Dr. Damina, you know, you guys in Nigeria, everybody says you're corrupt, you're corrupt, you're corrupt. Meanwhile, what some of you guys do in Nigeria that we call corrupt is exactly the same things we do in America. Absolutely. It's just that ours has constitutional backing. So why don't you guys back up yours with constitution so that it is no more corruption? The stealing of the election. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later. Who's the best, uh, final one for this segment before we go to the videos? Who, who, is the, who is the best pastor in Nigeria? The best man of God? You have so many great men. You have Dr. Damina, you have... Uh, I, I don't know who is Adipo, you I don't have Adibayo, I don't know who is Adeboye, you have uh, uh, Chris Oyakilomi, the who Bible is one of my says, favorites. Judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who shall bring to light the motives of men's hearts, and thereafter shall every man have praise of God. So we should wait it's for we now. should wait for Jesus to descend it's to true. Jerusalem, and he will tell us for the coming of Christ at the bema seat. 
the great white throne, I mean the, the judgment seat of Christ, we will know there, then, who is the great man. Of it's Christ. only then, far away. Only then. 7,000 years from now. Only then, because what you call great today, the motives could be wrong and there will be no reward. What you but then the Bible says, by their fruits we shall know them. No, 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 no. Their fruits we shall know them, it's different in that context mm -hmm. from what we're talking about right now. We're talking about who is the great man of God. Yes. Okay, so the Bible says, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. Okay, let's talk about somebody who has passed. Benson Idahosa. He was a powerful prophet who could predict people could die. He could kill witches. Babangida was afraid of him. Was that correct? Well... He could predict big Again, time. Let, let's talk of somebody else who has died. Ryan Hardbonke mm -hmm. packed the best stadiums in Africa, mm -hmm. shook the whole world with his crusades. Before he passed, he said, you know what? I'm not going to attribute the success of my ministry to myself. Mm -hmm. You see, Ryan Hardbonke, but there are intercessors, people who prayed and fasted. There are people who did a lot of groundwork. I only just come to preach. And then he said, I'm sure when I see Jesus, some of these people have more reward than myself. Mm -hmm. So again, judge nothing before the time. Until that day when we see Jesus and he brings all our works to the fire and the fire tests everybody's works, then we shall now know who is the great man of God on that day. But before then, we keep laboring. We keep working faithfully and trusting God. If there's a believer who changes churches, in two years he has gone to six churches, is he the problem or the churches are the problem? He is in search of something he is yet to find. Mm -hmm. When he finds, he will settle down. Really? Yeah. L last one again. He's a believer. Yeah. When he finds it, he will settle Recently, down. there's been a phenomenon uh, on social media where pastors are leading prayer sessions on the phone in the night and in the morning. It's a very big one in Nigeria, which is followed by people in Ghana. Sometimes, 1.5 million people are tuned in to listen to a pastor they can't see and he's just leading them in prayer using scriptures. The prayers that are most popular, if you look at the way in which the social media goes up, the prayers that are most popular are the one that you pray, fire will burn you. Let the fire burn your enemies. And then they all go, ta 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 the fire burns your enemies. In Ghana, we had a similar phenomenon. It used to be called Mopa. It's still called Mopa, it's old. It's a new one called Alpha R. Some of the ministers of the gospel were concerned about this phenomenon. Yep. I spoke to one of them, and he led me to a scripture. Uh, it was a scripture that I believe Gamaliel was telling the, uh, the council mm -hmm. about Peter and Co. If it be of God. Yeah, if it be of God, it will remain. Is that the simple answer? And I, I told the pastor, this is just too simple. He said, he well, has nothing to say. If well, it again, be of God, it will last. Again, like I have said, Christianity is apostolic mm -hmm. and historic. Mm -hmm. What the apostles never did, we are not supposed to do. I never saw any apostle in the scripture. Who did that pattern of ministry? No, mobile. but there was no mobile phone at that time. Dr. Well, Dabina. again, there was no mobile phone. Yeah, it's a communication. But there could have been other forms of doing that communication. The Bible teaches... Was there an apostle who was on TV? You were on TV, Dr. Damien. There was no, but again, like I've said, <laughs> it's apostolic and historic. Yes. So we have to abide by apostolic practices. God wants the believer to develop a relationship with him that is independent of anybody helping him. God wants you to know him by yourself. For yourself. This yeah, but that's what they are doing. They are leading people that's, to God. That's what they are doing, right? Yeah. Okay. Because the technology is new now. Yes. You're on TV. But Apostle Peter was never on TV. Yes. Uh, so if you're saying we should do what the apostles did, you shouldn't be on TV. Well, again, remember, I'm on TV to teach God's word. Yes, they are on the if radio the apostles, to help people if the pray. Apostles, if the apostles were alive, they will be on TV to teach God's word. If because the apostles were alive, they will they hold went. a mobile phone, rally in the night when teaching. people can go on. And I'm teaching the word on mobile phones. No, they are leading them in prayer. Well, again, the Bible tells us in the book of, uh, of, of Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Absolutely. but against principalities and powers. Correct. Okay? So a believer is supposed to develop a personal prayer life on his own. Mm -hmm. A personal prayer life but if i'm not able to develop a personal prayer life why wouldn't and you? i know that every midnight alpha hour will be on from midnight to two and that becomes my foundation to build my prayer life what's wrong with that the point i'm making is beyond that mm -hmm. a believer ought to have a personal prayer life that is built on serving christ secondly a believer's prayer is not supposed to be self-centered it's supposed to be christ and the kingdom centered Look at all the prayers. Suffer not a wish to live. 
Now look at all the prayers in the New Testament. There was no such prayer. But they suffered what they wish to live. That's a personal prayer. Well, that was, with the, the witches in your family. that was in the Old Testament. There, I get confused again when you say Old Testament. Of scripture. So a single it has doctrine. no corroboration anywhere. Safa not a wish to live. It has no corroboration anywhere. So is what? We it's should not ignore it. Yes. We should ignore it. Yes. And let the witches live. Who did Jesus die for? Enemies. Yes. Even yes. Christ died when you were enemies. But it says if you, if you prayed on your enemies, it's like you're heaping coals of fire on their head. Yeah, but so, so pray and bless them. So that you heap coals of fire on their head. If the church had prayed for Paul to die when he was wasting the church, you will not have half of your New Testament today. Why would the church pray for Paul to die? Just like they're praying for people to die today. But Paul was with the church. That was, oh, you mean when he was persecuting was, the church? Yes. yes, but they prayed for him to die. They certainly that did. That was an act of witchcraft. No, there's no such record that they But prayed Peter for was him to refusing die. to help Paul, even when the Lord told him, go and deal with the man. Peter yeah, was he refusing. was afraid. He didn't want to be killed. He was angry. No, no, he was afraid. He was angry that the, the great love you, of Jesus is being extended you, to this rogue. But if you read, you see what Ananias when Ananias was asked to pray, he said, Lord, do you know the kind of havoc this guy is causing and you're sending him to that guy? He kills people. And Jesus said, go thy way. He's a chosen vessel to bear my name. And Ananias went with that encouragement. They were just afraid of him because he knew he was killing everywhere. But he was blind. He was blind just for, that was not just. At the time Jesus told them to go, that he was, was blind. That was not permanent blindness. I, I know, but uh -huh. at the time Jesus said, go to Paul, he was blind. And then Ananias prayed for him and he received his sight. Yeah, so I'm suggesting that, to you that they were not afraid anymore. They were angry. No, that was a miracle. They could yeah, have been angry in one sense, but that anger didn't stop them from extending what God has instructed them to carry out to him. And remember with enemies, Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Bless those that curse you, that you may be like your father, which is in heaven. Which means your father in heaven's wish for everybody who hates you is for you to pray for them, for you to desire for them to be saved. The will of God is for all men to be saved. Witches, non-witches, wicked, non-wicked. That's God's purpose. That's why Jesus died. And the church must be seen agreeing with God to believe God for the salvation of all men. If I come to work one evening and this is my chair, I come and they've poured black powder on it. And I take my phone and I call my pastor. So, so there's black powder. I said, put your right hand there. Take a bit of water. Let's start. Anybody who has done this, return to sender. Return to sender. We're going to kill them. If they want to kill four of us, they will kill thousands of four by my right hand. Ten thousand shall fall. Only with my eyes will I be holding. We're praying. Is that correct? Well, the believer ought to know his authority. Mm -hmm. And know that all those things, you trample over them. And mm -hmm. they shall not hurt you. So when I see that, should I call the pastor or not? No need. Why should you call the pastor? What should I do? I should sit on it? When you are taught, you just <laughs> clean it. Put the thing off and sit there. But if I sit there and I start feeling it in my back, it's a kind of thing. No, you won't my feel. Head. You yeah. won't feel because if you know your authority and you know that Jesus destroyed principalities and powers and he made a public show of you and triumph over them, if you know that, you will not be afraid of any of such things. Satan is the least thing to worry about. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Let's get to the videos and then... Uh, and see what we got. Uh, it's time to take another break and uh, we'll come back 